Hello, this is the uh, makeup uh, lecture in case you weren't there at the uh, class towards the start of the year when we talk about the first uh, big assignment which is the get to know you paper. Uh, it's a lot more productive than the get to know you games of two truths and a lie and things like that. I think you will find that you learn about yourself through this. That's been the experience of students in the past. And I really feel like I learn a lot more about you than we could from some silly game or two from the first couple days of school. So uh, you should have in front of you the uh, packet that I gave you. Now don't worry, this is a large packet, but we're only going to be doing part of it. And you should have uh, the uh, description of the assignment, which I have uh, here in digital form. What we're going to do is we're going to have a slightly mathematical approach to getting to know you. We're going to have some objective data that will help me uh, learn how to teach you better. So <clears throat> this assignment is a two-page paper. It's not very big. It's not very long. But you will find it takes a bit of data gathering before you can start writing it. Um, the first part, the first major thing that we're going to do is find out your Myers-Briggs type indicator, your MBTI. Uh, this is the first biggest, most important section of the paper and the one that I uh, am the most knowledgeable about. Your Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator is made out of four letters and you get one from each of these four categories. So you are either an E or an I followed by you are either an S or an N, followed by you are either a T or an F, followed by uh, you are either a J or a P. So for example, I am an INTJ, uh, my best buddy is an ESTP, my daughter is an ENFJ, my wife is an ISFJ. Uh, people come in all kinds of different sorts. There are 16 possible ways to combine that. Now the first letter tends to be pretty confused in people's minds. They tend to think that introvert versus extrovert uh, means that either you are a party animal or you are a hermit who likes to live in a cave. Uh, that's not really what we're getting at here. This is about how do you recharge. When you're around a bunch of people and you have to do something sort of outward facing, does that deplete you or does that fill you up? Uh, do you like to get away and read, or do you like to get away and be around people? So that's more of a measure of uh, introversion versus extroversion. Um, the second letter, N versus S, is really a very, uh, the, probably the biggest uh, difference between people is that you've got people who sort of live in the present and they see thing after thing after thing, and you've got people admittedly like me, who sort of connect all the dots all the time and are actually not really present with you at every moment, but more sort of um, living slightly for the future at all times. So some of these uh, categories here are that S's tend to be people who have a mental state of mind dwelling on the present. They use common sense to create practical solutions. They have vivid, vivid memory recall, rich in detail, because they were living in the present so much at that moment. When they go back and they think about it, it's very uh, rich in uh, lots of observations. Uh, they utilize past experiences for uh, improvisation, and they prefer clear, concrete information. So when you're talking to an S, they don't want to know like your theory about how it all goes together. They want to know fact after fact and the logical sequence of how it just goes together. Um, and N, on the other hand, prefers to dwell in the future and future possibilities. They use imagination and creativity to formulate new solutions. They use memory recalling patterns and connections, and they live for how everything is interrelated. Uh, they are comfortable with deciphering things from fuzzy data. So this is how it helps me as a teacher to know how many N's and how many S's there are. And when I approach somebody, are they going to be able to make connections from broad statements, or do they want to have X equals 1, X equals 2, X equals 3, That'll help them then step forward to x equals n, just ab very abstract. 
The uh, third letter uh, is, again, kind of got some names in it that sort of maybe don't help you understand it the best. Um, they could uh, be, the, the words stand for T, T stands for thinking, F stands for feeling, which sounds like, are you a logic chopping Vulcan or are you a great big teddy bear hugging everyone, rainbows kind of person. Um, it's really, I mean, that's kind of the extremes, but it's really about um, is your standard inside you or outside you? Do you feel like there is a objective external standard that things should be weighed against or is it inside you that you look for where to measure things by? And this is all very reaction. People don't think about this. This is just your gut. Where does your gut go? So um, a T tends to make decisions based on facts and logic. They notice tasks and work to be done. They provide objective and critical analysis, and they accept conflict as part of human nature and relationships. Now, when carried to a sinful extent, uh, this can be people who sort of ignore other people's feelings and just like, no, this is true, you gotta deal with it, suck it up, you need to, you need to face facts. And, and I think that as, as Christians, what's, what's useful about Myers-Briggs and what's missing in Myers-Briggs is that this is all about the different inclinations that people have. And this doesn't talk about sin at all. You can take this to a sinful extent, but it isn't in and of itself sinful to just be a T by default. Our culture says boys should be T's, girls should be F's. So that's just our culture. That's not actually uh, something that God wants for all human beings. But it is uh, sort of put upon you, and girls have a harder time when they're T's, and boys have a harder time when they're F's in our culture. What is an F? An F is somebody who uses personal feelings to make decisions. They are sensitive to the needs of others and take others into consideration. They seek approval from peers and side with popular opinion. They become unsettled around conflict and disorder. So you imagine a fight between uh, two people and say, like, this is the way it's got to be. And then the other person responds with, but that doesn't feel right to me. I don't like the, how that makes me uh, react inside. And they're like, who cares how you react inside? It is what it is. Deal with it. That is an argument between a T and an F. And so the real use of this is A, to find out who you are, but then also to sort of recognize my, the arguments, the way of speaking that, that works for me, that explains things, uh, makes, works for me, doesn't work for everybody. And you need to practice going outside yourself and speaking the other person's language. Even if both of you are speaking English, people have different ways of using language. The last letter is J versus P. And this one, I have a cute little uh, analogy here. This is the sort of litmus test for you to be able to see which one you are without even taking the Myers-Briggs uh, test. The uh, alarm is gonna go off at seven o'clock and you wake up at 6.59, 6.53, 6.57, some odd number uh, that's not a multiple of five before the alarm is gonna go off. Now, I hate to tell you all the, the P's out there are gonna think this is the dumbest thing ever, but a hardcore J is somebody who will lay there for three minutes or two minutes and just wait for the multiple of five to come on the alarm clock. Isn't that, I, I mean, I'm a J, so I'm, I'm making fun of my, my tribe because that's my tribe, I'm one of them. I lay there waiting for a nice, whole multiple of five. What? I don't know why we do that. But that's, that's J versus P. Do you go with the flow or does everything have to be exact and fit in a box and have a nice label and edges all well defined? Um, you can imagine a, a J and a, a J mom and a P dad. Uh, when vacation time comes around, the J mom says, "I made a schedule for every day of our vacation." And the P dad says, "There's a schedule for every day of our vacation." Some people take comfort in that. Some people take horror in that. So J versus P. And of course, once you take the test and you want to sort of like 
feel out, is this really me or not? There's all kinds of cute things that you can find on the internet that have charts for Harry Potter and for Star Wars, and they um, help you make a decision. So when, when you go to these websites, and I'll put some links in the doobly-doo uh, down below here, um, you need to uh, think about um, maybe if the number is sort of on the line, uh, then maybe you are just feeling that way this day when you take it. So if at all possible, get somebody else who knows you, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your bestie, to, to take a look at this. And if you got a couple choices, like you're on the line between T versus F, so, so maybe you got I, S, T, P, and then, uh, but your T and your F was like right on the line. So you, you show the two descriptions, I, S, T, uh, TP, ISFP to your, uh, your best friend and usually what will happen is you're kind of like, well, I could go either way. But your, your best friend, like, no, 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 that one is you and that one is not. And it's usually um, your friends and your family kind of have an opinion about you. And so this is not, a lot, a lot of people react negatively. This is not supposed to be like putting you in a box and this is who you are for forever and I'm locking you down. People change with time. People change as they get to know themselves better. People change in different situations. Um, I am an INTJ. We'll get to mine here in a minute. Uh, but I am totally an ENFP when I'm in front of the camera, uh, when I'm in front of people, when I'm in a social situation. And, and I've done that ENFP shtick for so long that it just comes out of me lots of different times. So there's, there's, there's maybe you kind of need to be relaxed and comfortable with this test um, before you'll get something that people sort of say, yeah, that's sort of your baseline personality. I'm not trying to put you in a box, not trying to make you be somebody for forever. This is just introductory material from you to me. Uh, like I said, I'm an INTJ. We're the evil masterminds, but I try to be nice about it. What we're going to do in the Myers-Briggs part is um, you're going to take a test, and I've got some links uh, for you to maybe click on different ones, um, but you're, you need to get your percentages. You need to get your numbers about uh, how uh, much into I or E each letter you were. We're going to then take the one, once you sort of settle on a type that you think actually matches you, we're going to go to 16personalities.com, again, link down below, and you're going to click on personality types. And once you uh, find your type, um, you're going to look uh, and see what category they put the different types in, and you're going to find phrases that um, describe you, ones that you agree with, ones that you think are accurate descriptions, and you're going to copy those down uh, from 16 personalities. Then you're going to go to personality page. Again, you can just click below, uh, and then you're going to click on the word portraits, and you're going to find your type, and it's got a label. Does it suit you? Click on your type, and then again, finding phrases from their description that actually describe you, that help me get to know you. Um, if you're finding that your description is not 100%, um, that's OK. But if it's not even 80% accurate about who you are, then you might need to go back and look at your numbers and pick a different type. This needs to be about 80% accurate. And it should be. OK, part number two, driver, analytical, expressive, amiable. So what you're going to do now is you're going to turn in the uh, Equipping the Saints package to page 11. And on page 11, you can see here we've got a bunch of different either ors. And as you look through these uh, either ors, you're going to say, does this one on the left describe me or does the one on the right, um, which one is more me? So for example, the very first choice, want to understand life before they live it versus want to live life in order to understand it. Now one of those is more you than the other. So then you're going to put a check mark next to the one that describes you. And you're going to go down the whole page uh, making those different uh, check marks for which one accurately describes you the best. So when you get to the bottom, there's a spot for you to total up everything in this column and everything in this column. 
and that'll be your de uh, deliberate pace total and your rapid pace total. Then you're going to flip over to page 12, and you're going to do the same thing with uh, these choices of two things each, but you're going to pick one, and then you're going to get to the bottom, you're going to total it up, and you're going to get to the bottom of the add up to all the check marks, just count them up, and that'll be your total down here. Now, the money payoff for this is on the, uh, the next page here. This is where you're going to take your totals that you got from the previous two pages and put them in here, and then that will allow you to total up for this box, total up for this box, total up for this box, and total up for that box. Now, one of these is going to be the winner. One of these is either driver, analytical, expressive, or amiable will be first place. And one of them will be second place. So you need to record those, which one got first and which one got second. This is supposed to be a description now of your approach to life in terms of whether it's fast to slow, slow to slow, slow to fast, fast to fast, that kind of how, how driven are you about things, how people focused are you about things. Um, this system, also called the DISC system, D-E-A-A -A is the same as DISC, um, sort of says how do you approach tasks and people and pace. Um, are you a productive, competitive, aggressive, headstrong person that's get her done? Uh, that's the driver sort of people. Are you someone who is talkative and enthusiastic and spontaneous and persuasive? That's the expressive uh, people. Are you peaceful and loyal and good listener and dependable? That's amiable. Uh, or are you much more systematic and detailed and organized and orderly? Now, one of these is probably your default, and then that doesn't always work. So you kind of have a second choice that you have as a backup plan. And uh, if I am a very uh, analytical person. I like to go through and, and know what's going to happen, where are the details, what is the plan. And if that doesn't work, if this is a situation where people are like, oh, oh, oh you're just logic chopping impersonal, then I'll go for the expressive. That's my backup is to be the talkative, persuasive guy. So that's, that means that on my paper, I say I am an analytical expressive. Those were my totals where I came out the highest. Lastly, last part of this paper is the talent inventory. And so what we're going to do is in this packet, we're going to turn to page 18. And here we've got to follow the instructions kind of carefully. In section 1, Roman numeral 1, concerning communication, you need to pick three to five of these uh, numbered points that best describe you. So from uh, under A, B, and C, there are 15 different points. You only get to pick three to five of these. So maybe you like writing in words, sketching and illustrating, and acting uh, and telling jokes. So then those would be your three that you would pick for your talents from section one. Write those down. They're going to go in your paper. Continuing now uh, on uh, page 19 is uh, Roman numeral 2, and you only get to pick one of these. There are three things right there, but you only get to pick which one of these is mostly you. And you're going to record that down from section uh, 2. Lastly, in uh, section 3, concerning functional capacities, there's a huge list that goes from 19 through 30, through 31, through 42, through 54. Great big long list here. You only get to pick five to seven of these from this whole uh, set of uh, pages here that best describe you. But these are your talents. These are your things that you've done, that you've enjoyed doing, that are sort of your way of relating to the world. So um, that is the talent inventory. You're going to take all of this stuff, your Myers-Briggs, your DEAA, and your talent inventory, and you're going to turn it into a regular old Westminster paper. Uh, it needs to be more than one page, and don't spill over past um, the second page into the third. Actually, if you go a little bit into the third, I won't mind, but I'm just trying to stop the people who like to blow stuff up. 
So you're going to take uh, your paper. I give you the title here. Um, you're going to need an intro hook. You're going to need to have a nice paragraph structure. Um, you're going to uh, have it be more than one page, hopefully less than three. Um, you're going to need to have your Myers-Briggs with percentages, the findings from 16 personalities, the findings from personality page, your DEAA results, and your comments on those, whether you th how appropriate you think that is and when you switch back and forth between your two, maybe. Um, your talent list with just a few comments. It's a long list. It'll pretty much write itself as a paragraph. Um, and then I'm going to grade on whether you have decent uh, grammar and style and um, whether you don't use any contractions or abbreviations or emoji or hashtags or any of that garbage. This is a paper. Try to practice writing like an adult. Um, and then be creative. If you um, have a fun intro, bring it back at the end. If you've got, um, you know, I'm always, INTJs, we're always Darth Vader and Voldemort, and so I try to make some jokes about being a good bad guy. Uh, you could make a Wreck-It Ralph reference there, I don't know. Um, if you want to try to bring in cool stuff you find in Pinterest or Google Images, um, things like that. Remember, this is about me getting to know you. That's the point of it. Um, you can get to know me and help yourself write a good paper by um, uh, looking further down here and here's my paper um, all about Mr. Murphy and the ways that I am like. So, I hope this is helpful. Uh, please uh, see me if you have any questions. Check Veracross for the due date and this will help us get to know each other. So, have a great day.